Location, location, location. Not far from Boston's historic fish pier, the seafood industry has a new home and a new mandate. Look beyond the daily catch. We sell throughout the United States, but we buy throughout the world. So this fish right here is caught off of Hawaii. It's an opa, otherwise known as a moonfish. Michael Scola is a seafood processor, a family trade that traces back to his Sicilian great-grandfather. Came here with what he knew, fish in his blood, and taught his son how to fish. At that time there, they could fish 365 days a year. They were bringing in 200,000 pounds on a, on a trip. Today, the Scola family brings in fish in cargo containers. Boston Sword and Tuna joins a growing cluster of firms in South Boston's Marine Industrial Park. Chances are the fish you bought today was here only hours earlier, says Larry Doerr. We're flying in fish at different times of year from Iceland. Well, there's an afternoon flight. It's here in four hours. It's out our door the same day. These tuna, fresh off the plane, says Paul Scola. Every day we have containers come from Hawaii, at least two to three every day. Flew out yesterday, they were at the airport last night, we picked them up at six o'clock this morning, and now they're ready to be sold to, to all our customers. Here we have our filleting line. We could be cutting any product on a particular day. We cut quite a bit of haddock, and the haddock fishery is very healthy right now. We actually are cutting some farm-raised salmon right now. On a busy day, we'll move up to 150,000 pounds of finished product including lobsters that have a happy home here for now. It's all water right from the ocean, right outside our building. It's all purified, it's all filtered, temperature control. We sell them from Massachusetts all the way to California, the Midwest, Florida. If my great-grandfather walked in today and saw this, he would not know what the hell's going on. <laughs> you look at some of these species and they wouldn't recognize it. He would recognize this, the old fish pier. There might not be as many boats as there was before, but it's just as important to us as it is today as it was, you know, 60, 70 years ago. This morning we got pollock off this boat, we got monkfish off this boat, haddock, they'll probably go out probably about 100 miles and they'll, they'll fish for, you know, 10, 12 days and come back in. Add it up and Boston's sword and tuna is on the move. We have 150 employees here. Originally we started here, there was six of us. And now we're growing so big that we're building a 50,000 square foot building right next to us here. Could have been condos. We have the support from Congressman Lynch and Massport to say, listen, we're gonna keep this marine use as well. It's in our blood. We're gonna to continue to do it and continue to teach our children to do it. The Nolan family started navigating the waters of Boston Harbor more than 90 years ago. Tour boats, water taxis, ferries, all part of Boston Harbor cruises. Now, Rick Nolan is donning a new hat, a hard hat, as owner of Blue Atlantic Fabricators in the East Boston shipyard. When sparks fly here, it's a good thing. There's a very strong market currently within the local waterfront population for docks. Uh, crane support, that sort of thing. Well, steel fabrication is the art of taking raw material, steel, cutting, shaping, forming, and welding it together. Yeah, just kind of Michael Julian, now general manager, came here right out of high school. My father said, go get a trade, go get a job, and here I am. I've been around steel fabrication since then and, and haven't left. Behind us, you see a large A-frame for an uh, offshore construction vessel. We're also working on a large 130-foot, 100,000-pound dredge boom that's gonna be servicing Boston Harbor. That phone rings off the hook for offshore marine wind construction. It's a market that's about ready to absolutely explode. Nolan knew the value of the company because Boston Harbor Cruises had been a customer. We saw the potential within the facility and within the talent pool, and we wanted to make certain that we kept that waterfront and water-dependent operation going. The property is owned by the Massachusetts Port Authority, who purchased it after the Bethlehem Steel shipyard shut down in the mid-80s. Adding to property preserved for the working waterfront. You can see the size of the structures we have behind us. There's only one way out of the shipyard, and that's over the water. And we're happy to add that there are jobs to be have on the working waterfront. Yeah, Blue Atlantic Fabricators is a good example. A lot of their workers are actually aging out. They're employees who used to work at the shipyards in Quincy and East Boston, and now they're aging out, so they're looking for new employees. By the way, a lot of people don't know that Massport is not a government agency. It's sort of quasi-public. It does not accept any tax dollars. It generates its own revenue, and it operates independently. That's interesting. All right, smugglers be warned. AMP is on the job.